Hey guys, Steven here with an HDR tutorial. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to basically take an HDR shot image, three bracketed exposed shots, uh, and then bring them into Lightroom and export them to Photomatix and then bring them back to Lightroom for a finished HDR look. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Lightroom. We have our three bracketed shots right down here. As you can tell, our settings are uh, shot on an EOS uh, Canon 7D. Um, 1 125th of a second at f8. Uh, ISO 160 and we have three bracketed shots here. We have uh, overexposed two stops, I believe um, We also have the evenly exposed um, 1 3 20th of a second shot and the underexposed shot by two stops at 1 800th of a second to bring out those uh, to bring to basically make those highlights a little less harsh and then we have the overexposed shot to bring those shadows up and the evenly, evenly exposed shot to overall bring the image out. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click these three objects. We're going to group them together by holding the shift key in on a PC. We're going to right click, hit export. And from here we are going to go into Photomatix Pro. I believe we're on version 4. And we are going to keep that at TIFF format. I usually keep my color space at sRGB. That's what I shoot at personally. So, And most monitors are calibrated at sRGB. Unless you're printing, there's really no need for Adobe um, or Pro Photo especially. Compression, none. We want to keep it uh, flat. Bit depth, we're going to keep it at 16. So there's more information. 300 at resolution for uh, PPI. Um, you can keep it at 350, 300, a uh, little easier for in the end if you want to ever print it. Um, so we're going to export that into Photomatix. Now, normally these are all checked off uh, as a default. I'm going to uncheck them because personally I think they make the image worse. They try and align it a little better. But if you're on a tripod, um, if this was handheld shot, I would recommend maybe doing these aligning and reducing the ghost artifacts because it's just shooting at an insane shutter speed. It's pretty hard to keep your hand pretty still for three bracketed shots. Um, so I would uncheck all these and as long as you get a tripod it should be fine. And we're going to automatically re-import them into Lightroom and you can rename your file if you want. I'm going to leave it that for now. We're going to export that, bring it up into Photomatix and then from here uh, we will start the tutorial of how to basically tone map your HDR image. Let this load. Uh, you're going to get a general flat, dreamlike image. Uh, very flat when it comes to contrast. Uh, there's no clarity at all. It's it's kind of almost your, your wedding type uh, clarity right there. But uh, we're going to take this histogram out. I don't like it. I don't deal with it. Um, it's exposed fine for my liking. We're going to fit this uh, image to window. We have all our settings set to default. Um, and then from here we're going to tweak them to make our HDR image jump. Now. Before we go ahead, I'm going to let you guys know that I do like to make my HDR images more of a, a grunge-like effect, more of that HDR look that you're probably watching this video for. Um, some people don't like that. It's all up to whatever you guys want. Um, I personally like the grunge look. I feel if you're going to do an HDR image, what's the point of doing it to make it look realistic? If Why not just take a, a evenly exposed picture to make it look realistic? I understand you guys want to bring out um, the full tone image the full dynamic range of the picture, but uh, I personally think it looks pretty awesome and epic when uh, we do the grungy kind of punch to it. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the strength up. Now, keep in mind, I do this pretty much to my liking again, so I mean, I'm going to end up changing this a lot before we finish. Um, I'm just kind of guesstimating right now and just playing it by eye see what I like and then see what uh, I don't like. So we're going to me just mess with some uh, strength. I'm going to bump that up to a 94. That basically brings out, makes it a little more crunchier as far as the clarity goes. Color saturation, obviously you know what that does. Self-explanatory. Luminosity. This is more your your fill light, what you would see in uh, Lightroom, which I don't really like to use that much. I think it looks a little more, a little too edited in my, my liking. But for HDR image, I do kind of usually like to use it. But in this case, I really don't need to. Um, the blacks are are really for that highlighted for that overexposed shot. I really brought the blacks up, so I really don't need any fill light. Uh, micro contrast. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's micro contrast. Um, it's basically your fine contrast, your overall contrast for the most part. I'm just going to keep it right here for now at 1.4. Smoothing, this is your overall smoothing. Now there's two different versions of this. You'll notice in Lightroom 4, I mean not Lightroom, Photomatix 4, there's your general overall smoothing, which tends to get you more of a realistic Photoshop HDR look. 
Um, and then there's your, your light mode, which that's what I prefer. If you go into light mode, this is exactly what you saw in versions Photomax 3.0 and under. Um, this is where you get that real grunge look, see like that. Now I'm not gonna go that grungy, uh, I usually keep it at low for the most part. Now you'll notice as you go to low, you will see more artifacts, more halos around your image. Um, so you don't wanna go too low, uh, or you can keep it at smoothing and go to your liking. The lower you go, the more grungier and punchier it looks. The higher you go, the more smoother the uh, overall HDR image looks and the more reali realistic it looks. Again, I prefer going the more grungier, epic, surreal look, if you may. Um, so I'm gonna keep it at low, that's usually what I stick with and I, I'll tweak it from here. Um, white point, this is your overall white point. Um, I am going to keep it, say, around here. I am gonna bring my blacks out a lot to make it a little more punchier. Um, so let's say, let's go blacks here. And now I wanna bring that light white point up a little more. So we're actually gonna go up a lot more. To 2.4 around, I'm gonna bring my blacks up as well. Bring that overall contrast. Now as you adjust these levels and go higher and higher, especially with the black point, you're gonna get more contrast thrown into the image. So it's up to you guys how, how much you wanna go up. Um, gamma, this is gonna be similar to micro contrast. It's your overall clarity for the most part, um, your overall contrast. Um, the higher you go in after past one to the left, um, you're going to get more of a contrast. The lower you go, um, below one is going to be more of a surreal dreamy look. So um, we're going to keep it, I usually like a decent amount of contrast in these pictures. I'm going to keep it at, mm, let's say one four for now. Temperature, um, your color temp. Uh, your Kelvin scale, so this white balance seems to be pretty legit, so I don't really think I need to adjust it anymore. But to the left, the more left you go, the more cool it's going to be. To the right, the more right you go, it's going to be a little more warm. Um, in this case, I don't think I really need to tweak it very much. Um, I'm going to mess with that more in Lightroom, so we're going to keep it just right here. Saturation highlights, it, highlight, it saturates your highlights, pretty self-explanatory. You'll notice any of the highlight portions of the picture will get a little more saturated. I'm going to bring it all the way up. I usually like to bring it all the way up and then bring it down to where it was to see what I'm really affecting, what area I'm affecting. Um, I usually like to adjust more of the colors in Lightroom, so I'm going to just keep it at 2.5 for now. Shadows, it's adjust your shadows. Now, I really don't like too much saturation in the shadows, but in this case, it looks like it's adjusting a lot of the sky it's affecting. So I am actually going to tweak that up a little more um, to about 4.5. That looks about good. Now, micro smoothing, this pretty much smoothens your overall picture. It's more like your lumen, your, um, your noise reduction for the most part, um, your overall smoothing your luminance. Um, now, I think it does, it's good when you have that grunge look because it will, as you notice, take away those halos. But when I go high, it really takes away that contrast and flattens out the picture. So I don't want to go too high. So I usually don't mess with it too much. I'm just going to stick at around four, three, eight, four. Um, yeah, let's just keep it at there for now and we'll adjust more in Lightroom. Highlight smoothness, as you notice, it smoothens the highlights again go all the way up go all the way down um, I am gonna just smoothen just a tad now I'm not gonna smoothen that much shadow smoothness smoothness same thing it will smoothen out your shadows we're gonna stay at 15 now shadow clipping I've found that this doesn't do much besides ruin the picture um, I personally don't use it because if you notice from look I'm at 47 right now back down to zero, barely anything's affected. Maybe under this um, undercarriage right here, it looks like it's affected a little bit, but when you pass 50, it, it just goes crazy. And it basically makes those blacks that aren't black, black. Um, so I really don't like to use it that much. I kind of find it not necessary, but for now we're gonna keep it at 40 just for the heck of it. Uh, and then I usually like to go back to the top and adjust the overall contrast again and strength. Um, I'm just going to stick at, say, 96 for now. Uh, tch, 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 luminosity, micro contrast, I'm going to bring up a little more. Bring that 1.8. Luminosity, I'm going to bring down a little more. And white point, I'm going to bring back up a tad more. 
So I like to just generally go over pretty much everything I just tweaked and just get a final retweaking of those settings. So that's basically it, what we're doing in, um, in Photomatics. And from here, we're gonna bring it back into Lightroom and really do our final, final finishing touches. Um, from this point, a lot of people can either do it in Lightroom or bring it into Photoshop. I'm gonna bring it in Lightroom, so we're gonna save and re-import. Give it a second for that, the Tone Map, and then import back into Lightroom. And from here, we will show you um, we are going to okay so now from here we are going to find that picture And now I pretty much have it already edited, so I want to reset that. And this is what it looks like back into Lightroom. Um, so from here, we're going to tweak it up some more. And we are going to add a bunch of blacks to that. I like to really punch my contrast. Uh, and speaking of contrast, I am going to bring that up a little bit in contrast. Clarity, I'm going to, let's see, go a little nuts for a second. No, I don't want that much. I'm just going to stick at 30. Your vibrance, keep it at 40, saturation, five. Now it looks a little too saturated to me. So we're gonna keep it at 20 for now. Brightness, maybe brighten it up just a tad. Now we're gonna keep that at zero. Fill light, there's really not much need for fill light since we just did an HDR image and that was the point of that. Um, to not need to do fill light. Now, recovery, you can do that, but it's really gonna kill your highlights in this picture. So I usually don't like to do too much of it. Um, I am going to do a little of that brightness though, however, and we're going to keep this up at 10. From here, I'm going to go clarity bring up a little bit at 15, vibrance 20, saturation that. Linear. Uh, now I do like to switch my tone curve to linear and tweak it a little more in Lightroom, just my own personal thing. This is how I usually do it. So you guys can do whatever you want, but this is how I like to do it. Um, we are going to go to that. I feel like this is usually where I like to keep it at. Around that area. Get a little bit of an S curve, but not really. We're going to bring that up to 20 again. Detail, sharpening, I usually like to go to about 70. From here, radius, I don't like to go too high, especially in HDR images since you're dealing with a lot of noise. We're going to do, do detail about 40. This is my general overall sharpening theory. And we're going to keep that, I think, at 74. We want to just get the edges. We're going to hit Alt and click on that, and then we're going to see just the edges. That's what it's affecting. So 74 looks like a good number for that. Noise reduction, I will do some, but not much since I'm not a fan of Lightroom's noise reduction. Um, detail, I want to keep that pretty high. Contrast, I'm going to do a mask of 70. Color, I'm going to keep it at about, let's say 10 for noise reduction, and also keep that at 80. Um, lens correction, really no point. I can't do it now after it's already exported. Um, I am going to do some vignetting. Nothing crazy, but just a little bit and a decent feather. And then from here, I usually come back and really tweak my colors. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting. Um, I've already done this part, but this is general, generally what I would like my HDR image to look like. Again, more of an HDR punch, more of an epic kind of surreal look to it. That's what I like. I think it really brings out the picture. I feel like that's the point of HDR, um, high dynamic range photography, to, to really make it something different, more of an art um, versus a general photograph. Um, so this is what the general final image will be like. Now I do have some snapshots that I did earlier. Um, this is one of them. Now this one I kind of really like the freaky HDR kind of, again, more of an epic look. Change the sky, change the, uh, I think I changed the blue and brought the hue up. So that's what I did with this one. And now we also have the black and white one. 
which I kind of like too, kind of make it look like a, a zombie town or something. Um, and again, there's a lot more contrast in this picture because I, I do like to punch it out in these uh, HDR shots. But just look at the look at the the overall quality and sharpness in these pictures. Just I'm not sure how good it comes out in this video, but I mean, this is some some crazy quality going on right here. Just look at how sharp this is. I mean, look at the dirt. Look at how perfect you can read everything. That's shot at f8. Now, this is this is my favorite out of all three snapshots. Um, so basically, that's what we'll do, and we're going to export. And uh, you would normally just export and upload to whatever site you want, Flickr, 500 pics. Facebook, whatever you might want to do, but this is my uh, my final image. So hopefully you guys learned something. This is uh, Steve Eckert with another HDR tutorial for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, so from Lightroom to Photomatix, back to Lightroom, that's how you do HDR photography, or at least how to edit them. So uh, I will see you guys next time. If you have any comments, leave one below the YouTube video and I'll be sure to get back to you. Or if you want any other videos or HDR tutorials or have any questions in general, leave them below. And uh, yeah, that is it for you. Thanks for watching.